Hello, arty peoples, and welcome to another episode of Jerry's Live. My name is Emmy Klein, and I'm your host this evening. And today's class is going to be a fun one. I'm very excited. We have some new products that have come in. Uh, so the color or the the sets that I'm going to be going over, we have three different sets, but they're all Turner Acrylic Wash. Now this is something that we have uh, had as uh, you know in our store for a while now, and you guys might be familiar with it, but if you're not, I kind of want to explain what Turner Acrylic Wash is. Uh, now, I did have a show where I went over all things gouache, um, and I do know my moderators, my amazing moderators, Amanda and Frida, can link to that show for you guys to check out and really see the differences between all the gouache. Um, but before I jump into all of that, now that I totally forgot, uh, today's class code, by the way, is JL249. <laughs> so if you are interested in any of the sets that I'm going over today or anything that I'm using, make sure to go to the website, jerrysartorama.com, and type in that class code, JL249, and then that'll bring up the teacher's cart and everything will be in there. So now that I remember to say that, sorry. Um, the sets that we are gonna be going over, like I said, they're all the Turner Acryl Gouache. Now these are three brand new sets uh, that have coordinated colors in them, and I'm very excited. But what is an acryl gouache? An acryl gouache is uh, what you would think of as a traditional gouache. Now traditional gouache is an opaque watercolor. So you have opacity, um, and you're gonna have that matte finish. Now an acryl gouache is slightly different because, like watercolors, a traditional gouache will re-wet. Uh, acryl gouache has that acrylic polymer added to it, so that is going to, once these dry, make it super permanent. So, as most people would with a traditional gouache, you can set up a palette, like a travel palette, and, you know, bring it to go, bring it to, uh, you know, cafe if you want to have a cup of coffee and go do some urban sketching, uh, go planner painting kind of a thing. Uh, this acrylic gouache is not something you want to do that with because if you were to squeeze these into a travel palette and then let them fully dry, they are not going to reactivate. So that's kind of key, especially if you are thinking that you can do that. But they do come in, each of these sets have uh, 12 different colors and they are all 11 milliliters. So uh, it's a nice little sampling of all the different you know colors that you can get in each one. There is not a ton of crossover, uh, but I do have my fancy swatches here because I really wanted to show you guys uh, the big differences between these sets. Now, uh, you might notice that there is a full range of color in every set, uh, and I will explain kind of how you can read this, uh, but for the mo right now, the thing that you need to know is that all of the top colors are the actual colors straight out of the tube. So that's what these are. Uh, you can always ignore that top little swatch, and there's a reason for that. Uh, but it goes from a red, a, almost a full rainbow in every set. Uh, now the reason why, and I did ask uh, the manufacturers, Turner, uh, why they did that, because we have an Earth set, we have a Dream set, and we have a World set. And, you know, why would you find all of these colors in an Earth set? Earth set you would think of as blues and greens, uh, now, what I really loved with their response and why I'm really excited about these is because they said we wanted to give you that kind of a feel in the swatches that we, we have that you can kind of all the different mixings that you can get with each set. So the earth has all these really beautiful blues and greens that you can get in there. Uh, but they wanted to make sure that the range of colors that you had within each set are varying enough to where you wouldn't have to do any kind of like a supplemental uh, color for this. You can just take a single set and be able to do a full illustration or painting with them. Um, so that's what, you know, you'll find in each set, but there are gonna be some changes between all of them. So let's actually go over each set and I'm gonna pop these two over to the side for right now and we'll focus on one at a, one at a time. So this right here is the dream set. I love their packaging. It's so, so satisfying. Uh, just somebody who's an artist, like I, anybody who does graphic design, I feel like they're gonna love this, you know? You just gotta appreciate good packaging design sometimes. <laughs> uh, but the Dream Set is one of those 
uh, colors. As you can, as I said, these are all the colors straight out of the tube. Uh, now, actually, let me open this up so you guys can see the little tubes. Uh, and I have them in order as they come in the set here. So you can see they kind of line up almost perfectly. That's great. So there are all your straight colors straight out of the tube right here. Now, the way I did this, this mixing swatch uh, kind of sheet for you guys is these are all the pure colors and these are all the pure colors. As you can see, they kind of go in the same order. So if I wanted to mix this horizon blue with, you know, say maybe the poppy red that's right here, it's gonna go all the way over here and this is gonna go all the way down here and that's that mix. Now if I wanted to mix that blue with say this, uh, what is this, rose down here, if I go all the way down here and all the way across, that is that mixture. So it's just almost like m lining them up kind of a thing. That's how you read this. Now you will notice that, and I can actually pull this up a little bit here, there are some squares that have additional little tiny squares in them. Uh, now the reason why I specifically did that for you guys is because some of these colors got so dark that I was worried that the camera wasn't gonna actually read them. <laughs> So I was worried that a lot of these are just going to appear black and they are very, very different. So if you look right here, you get a huge variety uh, within all of these dark tones and I have no idea if you guys can actually see the differences in the color, but I mean in person you can very much see the differences. I just wanted to make sure that that was very visible for you guys. Um, but that was the same color, the mixture, as I you know, laid it down. I just mixed in a tiny amount of the titanium white that comes with the, the set. So just to give it a little bit of a tint and kind of, you know, to where you can see those undertones and kind of the color a little bit better. Now, before I jump over to the next set, do we have any questions so far? Just want to make sure that we I don't skip any. Um, now, I actually should tell you guys what, what colors are in each set, huh? So within the dream set, we have a poppy red, a cadmium orange, and if I remember correctly, yes, it is a cadmium orange hue. Uh, now, if I remember correctly, yes, okay, right here. Here it is. Uh, I don't know if you guys can see that, but that is an AP certification, which means these are all non-toxic. Uh, and I believe it's on every single one. Yes, it's on every single one as well. So when you see that little AP, that means it's non-toxic. If there's a CL in that symbol, that means you, there are some hazards. So even though there is a cadmium orange, this is a cadmium orange hue, so they have gotten a similar color to cadmium orange, but it's not actually the toxic cadmiums that you know are in that pigment. But, um, I just wanted to make sure we definitely knew that these are all non-toxic. Uh, then we have the permanent lemon, then the hooker's green, then this is the barrel green, which is such a lovely color. I, I cannot help, cannot help myself. You guys know I love teal, all things teal, and that is just a really pretty color. Then we have the horizon blue, and then this is the night blue, which it's hard to kind of tell right here exactly just how beautiful that is. So that's why if you follow it all the way down, there's that white, that's the, the titanium white that comes in the mix. You can really see that color and just how pretty it is. Uh, now I will say that one I know from doing all these swatches is so strong. It is such a strong color. But then we have, um, this is a word that gets me every time. I have to hear Katie's voice in my head. Dioxazine. <laughs> uh, it's dioxazine violet. Uh, then that's that rose. It's really a punchy color because this dream set really has those really bright, vibrant colors. But within each set, you will also find a titanium white, a Mars black, and then some kind of a neutral brown. Within this set, it is sepia. So it is right here, it kind of has a little bit more of like a gray kind of brown tone to it when I mixed it with the white. So that's that kind of a sepia color. Now that is the dream set. We'll push that off to the side. Yes, so questions? Other than the Mars black and the titanium white, all the other colors are different in each set. I am pretty sure. I actually forgot to triple check right before we went live. I am... There might be a slight 
No, okay, I was thinking one of the oranges were the same in the set, but no, there is absolutely, within each set, other than the titanium white and the Mars black, all of the other colors are very different. You will not get the same colors within each set, which is kind of cool. So there's no, no duplicates. Do we have another question? We did have somebody who asked if they would be getting a copy of these swatches. With I'm so glad you asked. The purchase of these sets. Oh, well, you, so, here's the deal. Uh, you don't have to purchase the sets to get the swatches, technically speaking, because I already did a high resolution scan of every single one of my sketch, uh, all, all of my, um, my swatches, I almost said sketches, my swatches, and then I posted them for you guys to just have within our Jerry's Live Facebook group. So if you're not part of the Jerry's Live Facebook group, uh, just go over there and join. It's free to join, anybody can join. Make sure you answer the one security question because otherwise you are deemed a robot and I'm not allowed to let you in and I'm sorry. No robots allowed. But uh, if you do join that Facebook group, you can absolutely get this high resolution scan for free. Uh, now, then you can really take a look at every single one of the swatches and if you wanna get all three sets, you can. If you decide that this one is absolutely the one you must have, you can figure it out that way. Um, but I wanted you guys to have that no matter what. Now, uh, it, I know we do have people on YouTube who might not Facebook. Um, if you guys do have the ability to uh, get to Facebook and find my page, which is Emmy, host of Jerry's Live, you can send me a, a direct message, um, even if you don't wanna join the group kind of a thing. And I can just send this over to you. Um, but it is going to have to be through there. <laughs> so uh, if you, if you uh, get in touch with me, I can always send these over to you. So we have Earth Set is next. Let me make sure I'm grabbing the right one. Yes, this is the Earth Set. So this one is also very, uh, they're all pretty punchy colors, which I do love because you can get some beautiful vibrancy within the actual pure colors, but then the mixes are where they really, really come to, to life here. So the Earth set, you have a lot of beautiful warm tones up here, which absolutely remind me of autumn instantly. All of the autumn like landscape scenes would be beautiful to use these, as well as some of these, um, the brown tones down here. Uh, and then the original idea of this set is to kind of, when you see Earth from space, you get a lot of the, the greens and the blues. So even though you have, uh, you know, just a couple of greens and blues, when you get those mixes, because blues mixed with yellows are going to give you some more greens, and you can get a lot of variety. Um, it's just, it's really, really lovely. Even that yellow and that fresh green, when you mix it with black, you get varying tones of green. Uh, they're just very desaturated, and it's such a lovely, lovely set. I'm so excited for this one. So let me go over the colors that are in here. This is Permanent Red. Then we have Permanent Scarlet. And if you guys do see here, um, sorry, I got a little crumble there. Uh, permanent Red is a little bit deeper, and that Permanent Scarlet has a little bit more of like an orangey tone to it. So really lovely kind of variations. You can really see the undertones here when I mixed it with a titanium white, that permanent uh, red has more of the blue tones. Like I said, that permanent scarlet leans a little bit more towards the yellow, so it has a little bit more of that oranginess to it. So you get a, a nice variety. Then we have permanent yellow deep, and this is the cadmium yellow light. Again, it's the hue, because it's not the toxic cadmium pigments. But then we have another one of my absolute favorite colors, which is fresh green. It's this crazy, crazy lime green. I just cannot help it. Then we have phthalo green, also very beautiful. Uh, then turquoise blue, which you guys know I love. And then manganese blue, also really, really pretty. Violet, none of that dioxazine color that I can't have a hard time saying. It's just violet. And this one actually, which is really kind of fun, uh, in parentheses it says fluorescent. So it does have some fluorescence to it. Uh, so does that rose, I believe, in the, yes, in the, uh, the dream set. So, oh, and the poppy red. Poppy red is also fluorescent. Uh, then we have, again, the, the Mars black and the uh, titanium white, and then the brown that's within here is the burnt sienna, which is 
one of my favorites. It has a lot more of an orangey kind of tone to it. Yes, we have a question. So would you use this particular set, the earth set for animals and skin tones? I would probably not use this for, well, it's, it's all pretty versatile. I will say you can use any of these sets for animals or skin tones. It's just the level of like punchiness you want to your saturation of colors. You can desaturate anything you know you have a blue you can desaturate that orange by mixing them together um or you know you can kind of get different brown tones um but then if you wanted to get your like more naturalistic skin tones that way any of these sets would work really really well uh, as far as portraiture i probably would stick with the world set just because one of my go-to's for portraiture when it comes to turner curl wash is that uh, the ivory yellow. That right there, even when you mix it with um, like the, the more brown kind of warmy tones, you get some really lovely naturalistic tones that you can find like in the cheek or you know say uh, like a five o'clock shadow when you get these really lovely blues mixed in with that that ivory. So you know lots of varieties but I mean there's a lot of options with every set. We have a question? You may have said this already but uh, why would you choose um, acro gouache over traditional acrylics? Uh, that is going to be personal preference uh, because the acro gouache does have a really, really high level of opacity to it. If you are like a more traditional illustrator, a lot of people who you know go that route tend to be really familiar with gouache. Uh, they might not like how it rewets is the issue. Um, I really, really love working in layers with these because I can put down a layer, let it dry, come back in you know less than five minutes, and I can put down another layer, and that second layer is going to completely obliterate whatever was underneath, so I can do my layers that way. But the really cool thing about this is that you can also water it down really, really well, uh, and then be able to use it almost like watercolors. Now, you would want to do that on paper. So the other thing to note with the acrylic wash is that it does have kind of a brittleness that doesn't have a ton of flexibility. So harder uh, substrates and using thinner layers are better for this particular paint. Um, but as far as whether or not you want to use this or an acrylic, it's all personal preference. Another question? Um, I know that there's like a ratio of water to acrylic that you mm -hmm. would use. Would you use the same or would it be different for the gouache? It is different uh, because that is the other really, really, really amazing thing about this paint is that it's pretty concentrated. Uh, they have packed a ton of pigment within these uh, little tubes. So a tiny little tube like this is going to last you a very long time. Like I did all of these swatches and I used these tubes and I still have a lot of color left in them. Uh, and you know, you should mix water within this paint. Now I'm gonna do a little demonstration uh, later on so we can, sh uh, I'll show you kind of the consistency you're looking for as opposed to the consistency that comes out of the tube. Not that you can't use it straight out of the tube, it's just gonna be better for to get those nice thinner layers that are a little bit more, um, not, flexible but it doesn't have as much rigid rigidity that's a fun word to say rigidity uh, so it doesn't have a tendency to crack so if you were to put this down in really thick layers it's going to crack on you you don't want to do that um, now if you have a tendency to uh, use the like flexible surface like a canvas uh, or something that's going to have that that give and take acrylic would be a better option for you uh, but like for instance, if you use paper, you can water any of this down until the cows come home because the the fibers of your paper is going to grab onto those pigments. So the issue with the acrylic, when you mix water, you want to have that adhesion and you don't want to ex exceed more than 30% water to your acrylics because you're breaking apart that acrylic polymer that really holds your pigments down onto canvas. Now. Like I said, if you use paper, it's going to soak it up and it's going to grab onto whatever you put on there. So it's, it's the same for this. Yes. And you just would recommend this for use with a watercolor journal, right? 
Yeah, absolutely. Mm -hmm. This is so. fantastic for a watercolor journal. Like I said, you can use these similar to watercolors. Like I, I will be doing a demo and I will show you guys kind of how this works. Um, but as you can see, this is all of these swatches, I've mixed water into them. So this is already watered down. And I mean, look at how opaque these colors are. And they're also super flat, matte finish. There is no extra shine or anything to them, which I personally love. That is my preference. And the reason why is because I don't like walking down a hallway or uh, around a gallery and seeing a glare on my artwork. That is just something that I don't personally like. Uh, I also end up uh, scanning in my work and uh, reproducing them as stickers or, you know, whether it be like on a notebook cover, whatever it may be, this is going to scan in without any weird glare or color shift on you, which is why I really, really love it. So I think I went over all the colors. Yes, I went over burnt sienna and everything on, on this one, on the Earth set. So we have one more set and then we get to do a fun demo. And I'm so excited about that. <laughs> so the world set... Uh, is also very bright and vibrant and it's really fun colors um, but you have a less of like the greens kind of a, a situation as the earth set you know there are a lot a lot of greens and blues in there but um, this one has I feel like it leans more towards like the purples and you get a lot of really fun uh, varieties now again these mixes are only two of the colors within the set uh, you can get a larger variety if you start mixing in three colors. So, I mean, this this is only the beginning of what you can do, um, but there are a lot of really, really beautiful colors. Now, this is also, I believe, the very first one I did, and I ran out of time, and I forgot that I didn't do the little varieties of the tiny little white swatch. So I hope you guys can see this. But uh, again, I do have the high resolution scan of this on our Facebook group. Uh, so you guys can get a better idea of the colors. I was trying to really make sure that they look uh, exactly as they appear in real life. So let's go over the colors here. Uh, we have a cadmium red medium. And again, that is the hue. So it is not the actual toxic cadmium pigments. Uh, then we have permanent yellow orange. Then we have that ivory yellow, which I really, really love for skin tones, even like highlights and things, it's lovely. Uh, then the permanent green light, then we have the permanent green middle, uh, then we have a cerulean blue, which is quite lovely. Uh, it does lean a little bit more towards the like the yellowy blues, whereas like the one right next to it is cobalt blue. Again, it's a hue, so it doesn't have the toxic cobalt pigments in there, but that one is more of like a reddish purpley blue, so you get the two different temperatures and you can really kind of experiment with your color temperatures within your work. Uh, then we have a lilac, which is absolutely gorgeous. I love that one for like a five o'clock shadow. That really, that like purpley blue kind of a, a you know color works so well, especially when you do uh, portraits and like have that be like your shadow color. Instead of lean, uh, grabbing like a black, if you grab that color and kind of mix it into your, your skin tones, it, it just, Makes it so, so lovely. Then we have a rose pink, not to be confused. Within the dream set, this is rose, right? So you can really see quite the difference between them. This is rose, this is rose pink. So this one's crazy, crazy punchy, uh, but this one's got a nice, actually that one does also have a fluorescent, flore, fluorescence to it, um, which is quite lovely. And then again, the black and the white, same exact black and white, Mars black and titanium white. And then the, the brown in this one is a red ochre. So it does lean a little bit more towards those kind of reddish, um, warm kind of pinky tones. And you can really see that when you mix it in with the titanium white right there. So do we have any questions on the colors thus far? We have a question about the paint. Yes. Okay. Sorry, no, um, a little bit more. How is the texture when it's dry? Um, it's it's got kind of a how is it? It's it's matte, so it's not like slick. It's, it's almost velvety. It velvety mm -hmm. is a good term. Velvety is a nice term. This actually is really really great for if you want to draw on top of it. 
was my second question. Can oh, you perfect. layer colored pencils over yes. top? <laughs> yes, you can absolutely. This is another one of those things that I love using this for mixed media because you can draw on top of it your pencil marks or even your ink show up really, really well on top of this. Uh, so it works really, really nicely for that. So absolutely, totally great for mixed media kind of applications. Now, let me make sure I kind of keep these in the same order here because the demo I wanted to do for you guys, I don't, I don't know if you guys are ready for this. I'm so excited for this. This makes me so happy. I made some biker chicks. That's right. We got chickens riding bicycles. We have a dapper chicken. We have a kind of a hipster chicken with a fixed gear bike. And then we have an evil Knievel unicycle chicken. <laughs> and they make me so happy. It's so, so happy. I'm just, I'm just gonna kind of give you guys just a little bit more of an up close look on this. Now, again, this, I, did a high resolution scan and I posted it along with the swatches. So if you guys would like to print out your own biker chicks and color them within, you know, whatever you want to color them with, whether it be the Turner Acro gouache or colored pencils or whatever it may be, um, you can absolutely find these on our Facebook group as well. Again, free for you guys to use. Uh, I did sign it, so you guys are gonna have to give me some credit for these amazing drawings, please. Uh, but <laughs> I would love to see your own version of our little biker chicks here. Uh, so you can always tag the, the, the class code as well, JL249. You just use a hashtag and that way I can find it. So that would be amazing if you guys do want to do your own version of these. Now, the one thing we do have to decide, and I need your help because I just, I'm having a hard time deciding which set goes with which one because I want to use one set per chicken. I feel like that's just, it's, it's fitting, right? So I will let you guys decide that. Put that in the comments. I feel like we're going to get a kind of a variety. But I feel like, I don't know, I feel like Evil Knievel Chicken over here feels very dreamy. This one feels like he's going to be earthy, and then this one feels very like a world set kind of a deal. But That's what I was going to say. Yeah? Okay. I will let you guys, I'll, I'll give it a, a little bit of time while I set up my, my palette here. Um, now I am going to keep my swatches close by, but I do have whoop, different palettes for each one. Oh, and I do apologize that one has my picture in a picture, but... We might have to just do it that way. So I'm just going to pop them up here. And the first thing I'm going to do is a quick little wash, like I would with watercolor. Now, uh, side note, while you guys are voting on which set to use for which chicken, um, the way that I did this is I sketched this in pencil. I want to kind of go over how I prep for things like this. I sketched this in pencil and then I inked it with my accurate waterproof technical pens. The reason why I really love these is because I can scan them in and get really crisp lines like I have here. And then um, I have my original, oh perfect, I have my original um, drawing, not actually on me right now, but uh, that I, I leave for later. Uh, and then these, I actually ran, this is watercolor paper. Let me actually show you which watercolor paper it is. This is the Hot Press Fabriano, uh, the, the Aquarelle, uh, or, I'm sorry, the Artistico. Uh, <laughs> mixing up brands here. So this is the Hot Press 100% cotton. This is extra white and it is in 12 by 16. So the way that I do this is I set my printer up on my computer to accept 12 by 16 paper and I you know, put my layout and I actually ended up printing it twice just in case I need to uh, make it an oopsie, you know, just in case. So it doesn't hurt to have extra chickens, right? Uh, and then I just cut it in half kind of a thing. Uh, now I did have to tell my printer to uh, pull from the side tray. Uh, but if you guys are interested in printing off your own little designs onto watercolor paper, you should be able to put this through. This is 140 pound and it goes through a printer pretty, pretty easily. Um, but you do want to make sure you use a laser printer, not a, um, an inkjet. Inkjet will kind of 
blur a little on you because the ink tends to run as it gets um, wet. So uh, hopefully, actually, can we switch over to that side camera? I want to make sure this is going to be in the right spot. Here we go. We're going to start with this little dapper guy before I tape it down. And I do apologize. Uh, it is about rush hour traffic time, so you are going to hear a little bit of uh, alarms. They'll go by. It'll happen. We're live, guys. It, you know, it's going to happen. All right, so I'm going to just tape the edges down just, just to make sure that my paper does stay uh, a little bit more than just having it be loose paper. Um, I'm not going to tape the top or the bottom. I'm not too worried about it. But how are we doing on our voting for the chickens? I'm batting an I agree with Emmy. <laughs> and one, um, Yvonne says, Evil Knievel should be bold. The one in the center dream and the one on the left earthy. And at this point, I cannot remember what you said to begin with. So she might be also a Evil Knievel, I said with the dream set. Because he feels very dreamy. And like a little crazy, but I was saying the middle one be the earth set and then my dapper chicken feels very worldly. I don't know. I feel okay. like Evil Knievel should be the world set because he was very bold. Okay. And the middle one kind of reminds me of an 80s biker. So he should be a little more neon and should be the dream set. So we are, we are split decision and the here. the first one should be the earth set because when I think of those types of bikes, I think of the Victorian era, and I think of those old tiny sepia photos, and that makes me think of the Earth set. Hmm, that's true. Well, they're all going to start off as brown, just so we all know. There is going to be brown in each one, because I wanted to show you guys Eeny, kind of the... Eeny, meeny, miny, mo. You know what? I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to do what I originally said, and you know what? If you do not like my decision, print off your own biker chicks and post it, and show me your biker chicks. How about that? <laughs> So I am going to use the world set for my worldly dapper fellow, the earth set for my, I'm biking through, you know, the earth, and then the dream set for my crazy, he has a dream of being evil Knievel. That's, I guess that's what it is in my head. So I'm going to actually start off with um, just uh, the browns from each set. Now, remember, I'm going to use the set for each chicken. I'm not going to cross over, okay? So for this world set, we are starting with red ochre. I do not have to put a lot of paint out on this. Now, we are gonna probably need to switch just to that side camera for just a second, because I wanna show you, I have my, my brushes and my, my water over here. I wanna show you, uh, you know what, let's actually use, let's use the smaller brush, because I did not print these off that large. Um, let's switch to the side camera, because I wanna show you. Out of the uh, tube, you can see uh, it's it's got a nice creamy consistency, um, but it's not like super, super fluid. But I want to get my brush wet, right? You can see I have some water on there, right? And then I'm going to mix in the water with that paint. Now, do you see how much I pulled over? How pigmented that is? This entire little blob is probably all I would need for actually all three of these. Uh, I don't need a ton. I'm actually even going to water it down a little bit more because I want to do a wash, right? So with that much water, let's, let's get our first kind of wash down on our chicken. Now, because I did print this uh, with a laser printer, the printer ink is probably going to uh, repel the paint just a little bit. Uh, if I kind of brush it on just a little bit extra, it tends to stop doing that. I, I think it's just the ink that we have here. Uh, but I'm using such a thin wash that it doesn't actually go over that opaque and I can still see my lines. Now, I, like you, you just saw how thin I just made that. If I wanted to have a super opaque layer, I can absolutely do that. While you're doing that, yes. um, can you use acrylic, traditional acrylics with acrylic wash? You can, but you are gonna have a little bit of that um, acrylic polymer 
kind of take over. So it's going to end up being more of an acrylic rather than an acryl gouache at that point. And I cannot attest to what the finish of your paint is going to be at the end. Uh, just because I, you know, you're mixing paints at that point. So you might get a kind of a, I want to say like a satin finish almost. Because if your acrylic is kind of glossy, this is going to tone it down. But if your um, acrylics have a flat finish, this might stay nice and flat for you. I guess I hope that makes sense. It's also really hard to talk and paint in tiny little sections. <laughs> um, the dry time is very similar to watercolor, right? Uh, especially with how quickly, uh, or I'm sorry, how uh, thin I am making these washes, yes. So as you can see, the, this is watercolor paper. It's soaking it up. And I can do a lot of layers if I wanted to. Like, if I wanted to darken it up, I can. Not a problem. Do these lift? But that's the thing. You have to remember, this is permanent when it dries. So it's not going to lift like a traditional watercolor or gouache would. Um, they are going to have that permanence to them. But the really cool thing is that you can layer them. And you can bring back your highlights if you need to. I'm trying to just, just touch in his little legs. I don't know why I keep saying he. It's, it's a very dapper chicken, but could be a girl. Girls can be dapper, right? I actually ended up making this a little bit more steampunky. I, I added goggles. Not Love it. Not sad about it. <laughs> All right, so I'm going to add just a little bit of this down to the bottom here. You know what? Let me actually kind of soften that just a little bit but getting it wet first. So it works a lot like watercolors if you water it down that much. Now, let me actually get that back tire here with a pointed round because that just makes sense to use the correct brush, right? I have a really bad habit of using a brush that's slightly too big for what I need. All right, so this is the, what I would still consider like the neutral kind of brown tone of this set. Now, as you can see, because it's that red ochre, it has a lot of red tones to it. It doesn't really appear that like brown, like you would think a brown would. Now. Again, if I need to, I can make it more of a neutral color. Now, the opposite of red on the color wheel is green. Sorry, I had to think about that one for a I second. Think you're waiting for us Woo! to answer. <laughs> no. Um, now, again, I wish I had done that like tiny little square here because if I mix that red ochre in with this really lovely, I believe that's the permanent green middle, I get a really nice neutral. Now this one has a little bit more of that kind of yellowy tones because that green has a lot more yellow to it, which is why this appears more yellowy. But if I wanted to, this is going to, I, I don't even have to add that much green. And just so everyone does know, when I make these mixtures, I do not do exactly 50-50. I visually do 50-50. Now the reason why is because I know some of these colors are a lot stronger <laughs> than other ones. Like this, um, this red is going to overpower a lot of the colors. So I only add in just a little bit of that red instead of adding a ton of, you know, like if I were to do 50-50 here, it would lean a lot more towards that red. I just visually try to make sure that whatever my swatch is lands kind of right in the middle of the two colors that I'm mixing. I wanted you guys to have a visual of what you can get. So if I weren't adding that much green in here and I would keep it a little bit more of that red kind of brown tone, that would probably be a little less like foresty green and have more of like a neutral color. Yes. Ralph would like to know, would you use different brushes only for this? Like watercolor brushes for watercolor, you have these brushes for acryl gouache, Oil brushes for oils. That is a great question, Ralph. Um, I will say with this one, you would probably want to use 
your acrylic brushes with this, uh, mostly because of that acrylic polymer. You would not want to use your watercolor brushes on these uh, because once that acrylic polymer gets into the bristles of your brush, it's going to be really impossible to get it out, especially if it's like a natural hair, like a Kalinsky Sable. Uh, that's just going to be one of those things that it's going to stick in uh, and it's going to kind of affect your watercolor brushes. So if you have brushes that you already use for acrylics and you use it on paper and you use it like watercolors, then you're perfectly great and you can use it that way. Um, I would just probably, if my own personal preference is a soft brush. So I tend to go for, like this right here is the Ebony Splendor. <coughs> you can use this for acrylics or watercolor. It's a very versatile brush, uh, but it has a really nice softness to the bristle, which is why I like it for either. That's my own personal preference, right? All right, so for my Earth set, I have Burnt Sienna which is one of my favorites. I love that color. It's kind of an orangey, orangey brown. Again, it's nice and creamy. You're gonna get the same kind of consistency out of every tube. Uh, it's gonna have a nice con creamy consistency and I'm going to use just a tiny amount of the paint to get a wash for my fixed gear bike chicken. You can see it's still got that nice wash to it, but how pigmented is that? That's insane. Oh, and I do apologize. Let me actually move this over so we can get that side view now that I think about it. I think that's about right. Let me see. Yeah, there we go. Just want to make sure you guys can really see this. Bike your chicks. Remind me real quick, we're using the world set on the first chicken. World set, this is the earth set on my middle chicken. And then the dream on Evil Knievel. Yes. And honestly, I probably would do just a huge wash on this and get the whole background and everything. And then paint, actually, you know what? Let's do that. Let's do this one. A huge wash and not have to like paint around. We're gonna do this because I'm gonna show you how I would kind of tone down that background a little bit. If I were to tone the entire thing like this. Again, it doesn't have to be perfect. I'm just trying to knock down the white of my paper more or less and give it a nice ground for me to work off of. You can see definitely far more orange than that red ochre that was in the world set. Now Love. the only duplicates from set to set were the... The white and the black. Mm -hmm. Titanium white and Mars black is in every set. Other than that, there are no duplicates within each set. There are some that seem similar, but they are not. All right, so we got the last chicken. Is my daredevil chicken. Let me push this over here. All right, that'll work right about there. All right, and then I'm gonna have, this one is sepia. So this is gonna be kind of a uh, brown tone, but it also has like a a neutrally kind of gray tinge to it. Again, I'm going to just do a big wash because I don't want to move. Uh, I don't want to lose a ton of time doing this first initial wash. We can always address the background. This one is like a it's like a gray, a gray brown tone. And what's fun is that even if I don't get the background exactly how I like it, I can still finish this uh, painting and then cut it out and make it into stickers. But I would have to cut it out digitally. All right, so I'm gonna let that dry and then we're gonna pop back over to our rolled chicken. All right? So this one's gonna be nice and punchy. Now I'm gonna also kind of pop these off to the side while I work on Mr. World Chicken. 
what color should his hat be? I feel like lilac is a good is a good color. Let's let's lilac. Right. And you're just using water, right? Just water. That's it. All right. So now this one with the lilac, I'm gonna actually mix in less water. And actually, let's go to that side camera because I wanted to show you this is the other part, right? This is all dry, just so you know. Um, this is the part. Let me get that off of there that I wanted to show you, right? Less water and more of that paint, right? So it's still adding in water, but it's making it more of a fluid consistency. And that's what I'm looking for if I want an opaque wash because let's see how, how opaque this really is. I would probably be able to completely erase my lines if I weren't going around them. Might actually erase out some of them anyway. Yep, because you can see I kind of went over the top of his hat there. Uh, but if I add in a little bit of this titanium white, and mix it in here. Let's kind of push this up. I, I was hoping you guys could see that. You're not gonna be able to see that. Um, we, we can go over to the uh, the top, top view. Let's go to the top view. There we go. I'm just adding in a little bit of the titanium white just for a little bit of variety so that I can kind of give his hat a little bit, especially while it's still wet, a little bit of shading, like the light is hitting it. Right, and you know what, while I have it out here on the set, take that red ochre and mix in that lilac for a nice, lovely color for the uh, strap that's gonna go across the top there. Onto his goggles. There we go got a purple hat. <laughs> He's so dapper. All right, so let's, uh, you, I'll let you guys pick a couple colors. What, what colors do you guys want to see on my chicken? Teal. Teal. We do not have a teal. We have a cobalt blue and a cerulean blue and then permanent green, light, and middle. Cobalt blue. I can mix them because we do have the ability to mix our colors. Like this is a lovely teal where it's like that, the permanent green middle and the cobalt. Let's go there. I'll also keep my puddles separate so that way I can do a couple varieties. Yeah. All right. Let's do just a couple of little accents here and there. Now I'm gonna actually take a little bit of that red ochre. Now this red ochre is very strong. I just grabbed just a tiny, tiny amount and it is tinting that cobalt blue. Even the cobalt blue is also pretty strong as well, but that red ochre just takes over. So I'm gonna use that mixture for some shadows before I go in with my, um, let me actually make that a little bit watery. Go in with my uh, teal. Are these colors new? the line for the sets? I don't believe they are brand new, but the sets are what's brand new. Mm -hmm. So, because I've used the fresh green and I've used a lot of these colors before. So it's not that we haven't had them. It's just that they're kind of putting together these coordinated sets for like inspiration for you guys to have, you know? And I was telling someone earlier, I believe all of these colors are available in open stock too. So if yeah. you do run out of one, you can replace it. Absolutely. So you see how I mixed in that, um, the cobalt blue with the red ochre, because that red ochre leans a little bit more towards the red, it made a really nice purple, which actually I can also use as the shadow. Keep it consistent in his hat. Right, little dapper chicken. Now, I will say I don't believe I'm gonna be able to finish all of these. I feel like we're gonna definitely run out of time. 
but let's put some blue into his wings. Again, I'm saying his. I don't know if it's a boy chicken. Yes, we have a question? I think you addressed this a little bit earlier, but is it best to use water with the acrylic gouache, or can you use it at full strength? You can use it at full strength. Like, if I were to use this cobalt blue at full strength, it's going to go on a little bit thicker because it's going to have the thickness and it's going to be a lot more opaque, but it's it's not really necessary to get that opacity. It's a concentrated color. So, I mean, you can use it at full strength, um, but I would be very, very careful if you were to do that on a surface that has any flexibility because this does tend to have that cracking happen if you put it on really, really thick at full, full, um, straight out of the tube at full concentration. But that could happen with any acrylic type paint on a paper if you put it on too thick, right? It depends, honestly, uh, because acrylic does have some flexibility to it where this is not that flexible. So it just, it depends on the brand, honestly. Let me get a little bit of greens in here. We're going to use just straight green as well. Why not? It's going to be the funkiest looking chicken in all the land. <laughs> I mean, they're riding bicycles. They don't have to be naturalistic colors, right? Just little, little pops of color here and there. Why not? All right, now let's do, mix that cobalt blue with the green, get a teal, but I'm gonna also do some titanium white so I can get some highlights that are teal. Now, I did not add any more water and I'm getting almost like a dry brush effect, so that means I, I want a little bit less of a dry brush effect, so I'm going to, um, add in some more water there but that's what's going you're going to have uh, happen is that it's going to start doing like a dry brush kind of a look all right funky as chicken water here. So I have a lot of that. Oops. Laid it on my paper. Oh well. Again, I can cut out the background if I want to. Not a problem. And let me also use that teal in the bike because he needs to ride a teal bike, right? How are we doing on time, by the way? Okay, so I need to start speed painting. Again, I knew I probably wasn't going to be able to get all three of these done, but just enough of each one <laughs> to kind of get an idea. All right. I'm going to have to call that one done for now. I will definitely be working on these some more. Look at that fun little guy. All right, let's jump over to my earthy set, right? But yes, I use the earth set here. All right, now this one I'm going to keep in those blues and greens kind of a, a look here. So I got my fresh green from my highlights. Let's do phthalo for the shadows. Ooh, turquoise, of course. So it definitely leans a little bit more towards like the blue turquoise. I'll call that for right now. Let's let's stay there. All right, so let's start with shadows. Where his little butt is sitting on the, the seat here. Light comes down. Yeah. 
So because I'm using this in such light washes, uh, you can really see the two kind of colors optically mixing, but that phthalo green is so strong that it's going to overpower. But the, I will say the phthalo does have a nice transparency to it, whereas um, you know a lot of the other colors do have that opacity. I mean, you can still get the opacity here if you use it thickly or thick thicker, not a wash like I'm using here, uh, but it does, I feel like it does have a little bit more transparency than some of the others, and I think that's just inherently just from the pigment itself. Okay, speed paint some chickens. Who doesn't love a green chicken? <laughs> this is fantastic. And again, that fresh green has a nice transparency when I water it down like this. So it'll kind of interact with the layers that I have underneath it, which is really lovely. But I'm not trying to completely obliterate that um, initial layer that I had, that burnt sienna. Let's start with a little bit of that turquoise blue. Now the turquoise blue is very strong and will overpower those colors. So I have to be careful when I mix it in. All right, let's get a little bit more of that. You know what, I want a little bit of the turquoise to be a little bit lighter for my shadows. Oop, got some dry paint on the, the lid here. Alright. Let's go a little bit lighter than that. This is my earthy chicken. Almost like little highlights, right? You can see it's completely taking over all the line work that I had in there. Because that opacity, it'll really cover it up, you know? Which is okay. I'm just not going to be able to paint his bicycle. Little toes. There we go. Oh, he has the head too, doesn't he? That. I'll and have to go in. Helmet. Yes. Listen, if you are going to be riding around on a bicycle, you need to be wearing a helmet. Look at my little earthy chicken. He's so cute. I definitely want to punch in uh, some of those reds for like the, what is that little thing that hangs down from their face? I always want to call it the gobble gobble, but that's wrong. <laughs> I know there's a word. Guys, help me out here. Now, again, I know. No, it's not. I'm Wattle. W-A-T-T-L-E. It's a wattle. I knew you guys would figure it out for me. This is, I love it. All right, Evil Knievel Chicken. And he is going to be a dream set. So we definitely got to punch in some of those crazy colors like the rose. Oof, this is going to be pretty. You know I'm going to have to do that barrel green. Which, not going to lie, those two mixed together make one of my favorite purples. Let's see. There it is. All right, so again, barrel green down here mixed in with that, that rose. And it gives me a really fun purple. Look at that color. Although even the horizon blue mixed in with that that rose color is so pretty. But you know what? This one needs some crazy yellow. We're going to be like 
crazy fever dream over here. Let's get a touch of the poppy red, right? Yeah. And some of that titanium. Well, yeah, I'm going to steal the titanium white from my other palette instead of putting out some more. How about that? And I will jump straight in with just a touch of water. Not a ton. I, I do tend to use the uh, titanium white, especially if I want to do thick, uh, like opaque, really opaque layers. I do tend to use that titanium white with uh, less water than a lot of the other ones. But let's punch up these stars. Speed painting chickens. I feel like I've been in a chicken frenzy all day. Because I was drawing these all day. It was great. Not mad about it. All right, let's get some of this rose. Whoo, that's a crazy color. All right, let's do, we're gonna do rose. And then we'll use that blue, or the, I'm sorry, the barrel green as my shadows. And then the yellow as my highlights. Let's actually use the proper brush for the proper size of area that we're trying to cover. <laughs> yep, fever dream chicken. All right, so if I use a little bit of that barrel green, I can get some shadows. <clears throat> Ooh, I got a hair. I think my dog is trying to come back to work with me today. All right. Again, that barrel green, it does have some titanium white in there, which is why it does appear <coughs> really, really light. Uh, now, the really uh, also very cool thing about each one of these tubes of paint, and here I can actually put it here for you guys to see. Underneath the name, they list all of the pigments for you guys. So you can see the PW6 is that titanium white. Uh, then it has PB15 and PG7. So that's why this has that nice um, kind of lightness to it. And if you were to mix in like the that with the black, you get almost like a gray turquoise because of that titanium white in there. Look at this little fever dream, evil Knievel chicken. He's so cute. All right, let me get this mixed in with the yellow. Give me a nice punchy orange, even though I do have a cadmium that I can use. It's a little bit different. Oop, again, my dog's hair is attached. So sorry. Well, you're not welcome here. You don't tell Speak Lola where she can and cannot go. Lola just attaches to everything. And if you are not familiar with what Lola is, you are missing out. She is a potato. Yes. She is my, my very amazing potato. I'm loving this rainbow chicken. I love it. <laughs> He's so bright. Oh my gosh. All right, so I wanted this poppy red because I do want to pop in a little bit of, what did you say? A, a wattle. Wattle. There's apparently also a red wattle hog. They have a wattle on either side of their necks. How um, fun is that? <laughs> yes, fun. Listen, give me a silly looking pig any day. You can't tell from my dog that I love ridiculous looking animals. Remind me the next time you need a photo reference. Yes. All right, and if I take a little bit of this titanium white and mix it in with my yellow and that rose, I get a fun kind of fleshy, well, it's like a coral pink. I know you hate that, that term, <laughs> sorry. But my colors are still wet, so I can kind of mix it in there. And I'm gonna give him some pink toesies. Yes. 
All right, I think I'm gonna have to call it for the, the chickens because otherwise we're gonna be here for days. But I just wanted to quickly show you guys a couple of things that you can do with this. Ooh, I am so sorry, guys. One last thing. I did wanna show you how I kind of cut out the background a little bit here. Uh, let's do, I'm gonna do the white with just a slight amount of the, the burnt sienna so it's almost like a creamy color. Let's go back to that side camera because I just wanna show you just quickly around the edge of the chicken. I wanna make sure this is on camera here. There we go. All right, so whenever I do a big wash like this and I wanna kind of carve out my subject matter from that big wash, uh, you know, you pick your color and then I will, actually I need a little bit more water here. Again, it's not gonna be perfectly opaque because I'm doing a wash but like I will just carve out around it. and if it's not perfect that's okay because it gives it that like almost painterly kind of a look and then you can kind of take your uh let me get that titanium white back in there you can take your background almost back to where it was and be able to cut it away from your main subject right I'm being really messy with it, but that's kind of about how I would do that. So now that burnt sienna that's still visible within the, the like kind of butt, <laughs> the butt area of the chicken, um, it now becomes almost as part of the chicken and less of like a huge wash on the background. So I wanted to kind of show you that as, as a quick little, don't worry about making a huge mess, you can carve back in. And because this paint is so opaque, it is so good at doing that. So there are my three speed painted chickens. <laughs> I hope you guys enjoyed it. Now, do we have any very quick last minute questions? Uh, if we do have any questions that I did miss though, uh, I will make sure to always go back through the comments and get you guys your answers. So if you guys enjoyed this, make sure you hit the like button, thumbs up, whatever, whatever platform you're on and however you do those likes uh, and share this with your friends. and maybe even get a set for yourself or a friend and experiment with some acrylic gouache. It's, it's a really, really fun medium uh, and a really, really versatile paint. So I hope you guys enjoyed it. Uh, I hope you also enjoyed my baker chicks. <laughs> but make sure you join me next week because I am going to be having uh, my a guest artist on. Jeff Olson is joining us back, guys. So it is going to be Zoom only uh, through our Facebook page. So make sure you jump over to Facebook and check out that show. Uh, we are gonna be going over the Amsterdam acrylics and I'm very excited. Jeff is a wealth of knowledge and he is an amazing demonstrator. So I hope you guys will be there. And I will see you guys, oh. So next year, more. next week is a Zoom. Next week so is a we Zoom. we won't be on YouTube, only on Facebook. Yes, only on Facebook next week. So in case you guys are looking to see that live and um, I have not confirmed with him but Usually when I have guest artists on, we might have a giveaway. <clears throat> so, if you do want the possibility of winning something for free, watch us over on Facebook. And that's our Jerry's Artorama Facebook page. Uh, and I will hope to see you guys then. I will catch you guys later. Bye!